maybe you didn't succeed the session. But even then, what? Now I'm going to America. America needs Texas to lead the way. May God bless you with your efforts. And may God forgive us the great state of Texas. Hello and welcome to ETX Covered. I'm David Lippman. Governor Greg Abbott laid out the stakes at the beginning of the 87th legislative session as our state representatives and state senators returned to Austin. The most pressing issue they have to deal with is the state budget. The pandemic sent most businesses into a tailspin, and since the state relies heavily on sales taxes to fund everything it does, a deficit was all but guaranteed. State Comptroller Glenn Hager announced this week that the shortfall is $950 million. That's a lot, but better than estimates from early in the pandemic that it could be four and a half billion. Whether to borrow from the rainy day fund, raise taxes or cut services will be a tough decision for state lawmakers. Leading that process will be a brand new Speaker of the House. State Representative Dade Phelan from the Beaumont area takes the gavel with support from both Republicans and Democrats. So how does he view the challenges of this session? He spoke at length about it with our news partners at the Texas Tribune. I will say that we have a challenge ahead of us. There's no yep. doubt about it. We have a challenging budget cycle. We have a thousand people moving to Texas every day. And I use this line all the time. People probably get sick of hearing it, but they're not bringing asphalt when they move here. And they're yep. not bringing public school teachers when they come here. They're not bringing DPS officers and prison guards when they come here. So we have to provide that. That's, that's the, the core essential services of the state of Texas well, are, are those please. items. And um, we have less to work with. That's unfortunate, right. but the state of Texas is still the best place to do business. Sure. It's still, it's still the, uh, to me, the strongest economy in the entire country. So we will emerge from this COVID-19 fog, if you want to call it that, better than any state, quicker than any state. Are there any areas of the budget, uh, Chairman, that you consider to be off the table for cuts? We have to look at everything. I mean, that's that's. I've been on appropriations. I was on appropriations for two sessions, and there's yep. no there's no article that you don't go through with a fine tooth comb. That's your job. Are you open to the idea of gambling uh, and and uh, and the effect that it might have on the economy or marijuana? Since again, you're alluding to the possibility of of some other things that have been discussed. Well, it gets brought up in every conversation, and if you want to discuss those two as revenue sources, do it. Uh, through the prism of a long-term commitment because it will not fix the current budget deficit or the right. 22, 20, 23 budget issues we have. It will take years before you see any revenue from either one of those options. So, you know, to think you can plug and play on either one of those, it, it, yep. it's, not, it, it's not factual. It just, it won't work in this, in this current budget cycle. A lot of talk about how the virus, the coronavirus will affect the plans and protocols uh, in the building during the session. You know the pandemic is raging. Caseloads and hospitalizations are spiking across the state. We now have the more contagious strain of the virus present in Texas. How do you strike the right balance between public access and public health during a session like this? It's, it's an enormous question, You're, and I've entertained it a million times. And I can just say that you know, Texas always prided itself on how open it was to public and how often we allow the public to come in unfettered and testify for hours after hours after hours. As being chair of state affairs, I sat through some very long hearings last session. Yep. And I was proud and I was proud to do so. I, I wanted to hear from the public. You know, there's 150 of us in the Texas House and none of us want to pass legislation that impacts 29 to 30 million Texans without hearing from those Texans. But we're also dealing with the first global pandemic in 102 years. And we have to you know, protect the public we have to protect the staff, protect members, obviously, as we get through these 140 days. So it is a balancing act, and we're going to take it a day at a time, a week at a time, a month at a time. I think January will look a lot different than February. February is going to look a lot different than March and April as we go through and as the vaccine rolls out. And, and as it's rolling out, I think more public um, confidence will be instilled in both our economy and our government, and we may see more individuals show up here and, and testify on bills. Coronavirus testing is is not going to be required coming into the building is that right for the public or for the staff or for members coming into the capitol that is correct so you have uh, you have the option to test at the at, 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 in a tent at the north side of the capitol and then come into the building but it's an option it's not a requirement it is an option but 
each individual member, as always, can yeah. operate their office as they see fit. So if an individual member says, I only want someone who's tested negative today in my right. office, that is up to that individual member. Right, but why wouldn't you require testing of people coming into the Capitol if you're going to convene the public, if you're going to open the building up to the public? Why would you not want to, uh, to require testing of people who come into the building to be sure that somebody is not coming into the Capitol and spreading the virus to people who are there to exercise their rights as citizens oh. to see government in, in, in play? Sure. Well, we know that uh, social distancing works. We know wearing a mask works. And we know yeah. that washing your hands and using hand sanitizer works. So we're going to do all those, uh, and, and we're going to implement that throughout the Capitol. And that's that, will, I think, will go a long way. You know, if we're not going to mandatory test at the schoolhouse, if we're not going to mandatory test at the courthouse, then we're not going to mandatory text, uh, test at the, at the Texas House. What do you think we should be focusing on on public health? Well, I think if you look at – well, the pandemic is just – I think it kind of put a highlighter on what was already an issue, and that is – Areas around like rural Texas, where I am, I represent right. the, one of the largest counties in the, the largest county in the state of Texas without a full scale hospital. Yeah. And so it's, it's the haves and the have nots. And I think this I think the pandemic has kind of shone, shone a light on that. Right. And even with the vaccine rollout, you look at areas that have not gotten the vaccine. It's because they just don't have the infrastructure and it's a healthcare infrastructure. And so we've got a long way to go to improve that. There's no doubt about it. And this is a large state with a very diverse population, with a, with a huge with a huge border, 1,200 miles of border. Um, and so it's always been a difficult state to have, you know, the most robust healthcare policy given given who we are and how we operate in our economy. And Mr. Chairman, you know that Texas before the pandemic had more people without health insurance than any other state, and that since health insurance is tied in so many cases to employment, a lot of people lost their jobs in the last year. Our numbers have spiked up even higher than they were before. Should you all have a serious conversation about Medicaid expansion during this session, as some members want to do, or in your mind, is that discussion off the table? Uh, members from Republicans and Democrats have come to me to talk about improvement upon Medicaid. Yeah. Some want expansion. I don't think expansion's on the table. I don't think the votes are there for expansion. I think we can have a robust discussion about the improvements behind Medicaid, a Texas solution to Medicaid. Right. One that is revenue neutral, one that does not tie us to billions of dollars in future expenditures. We, right. will all, we will always have an issue with the uninsured because of the size of this state and the thousands of people who are moving here every single day and week. And they're not, they're not busting down the doors of Vermont, which has probably the best insured rate. They're coming to Texas. And so it's always going to be a challenging population. Do you think it was a mistake, uh, uh, Chairman Phelan, for the governor to issue orders without consulting the legislature or bringing you all back into session during the pandemic? You know this has been a topic of conversation. When I ask you, should there be legislation this session to prevent that from happening in the future? Well, you're talking to a House member who had four natural, pardon me, four state declared disasters in 11 months in my district. Yeah. Uh, two natural uh, disasters, a plant explosion, and COVID-19. So I've seen the, the Chapter 4 and 8 powers do extraordinary things in getting my people, my voters, my constituents back into school, uh, back to work, yeah. get the roads cleaned up, the power lines strung back up, and everyone back to, uh, you know, life as normal as possible. You know, the governor did all he could do, given the circumstances of a pandemic, a 102-year pandemic thrown in his lap. And when you have to make decisions, split-second decisions on how to operate under a pandemic, it's very, very difficult. It's a it's a lose-lose situation. I thought he did as best as he could. 